Hey up, Rock God 2004 back with another video for you. Um, and I have had a delivery today of uh, a couple of records. Um, I used to have um, one of these. It's a 10-inch single. And the 12-inch I've never had. But I do have the 7-inch. But I've always wanted this because it's the 12-inch with a poster sleeve. Um and it seems to be a little bit like rocking our shit to get hold of nowadays. I never bought it at the time. I might have had the normal 12 inch, but I didn't have the poster sleeve one. But I do now. I'm just going to uh, whip me little thing out. That's what she said. Giggity! Most people are going to say, what the hell is that crap? Um, look in the mirror and listen to the shite you listen to before you say that. Thank you very much. With your killers and your white stripes and all that bollocks. Right. It's very exciting. Both have the same seller. They were both in the same auction. And this better be in decent nick. So the 10 inch is the singles called I Am One, but this was done as part of a set, I think it was two CD singles, to give it the full Donington 1992 set. And it's Wasp with I Am One. And like I said, there was two CD singles you got I am one. I think one of them had the live version from Donington. But if you if you put them all together, you get their entire set that they played that day. This was the year that um, Iron Maiden headlined on their Fear of the Dark tour. So on side one, it's I am one live. Wild Child live, which is one of my favourite Wasp songs. What a cracker that is. And then on side two, you get Chainsaw Charlie live and I Want to Be Somebody live. And they are all... Live at Donington. It says limited edition Donington bootleg. Um, and there's the back. There's only like really, I mean, even Johnny Rod was late to the party, but there's only Blackie there. Um, them two were different. I, 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 I mean, that was when I started. This was the last album I got that this was off uh, called The Crimson Idol, and that was when I started to lose interest in them. Um, I still love the old stuff. And there's, there's Blackie there. Blackie Lawless on stage at Donington. And this has got a gatefold sleeve. Um, the sleeve's actually in really, really good condition. Because I've seen some for sale. It's tatty as hell. But that's... Got loads of shots on from the day. I've only ever been to Donington once. Um... And it was the first time Maiden Ned headlined lined in 88. And I said I'd never go again. Kind of regret not going to this. Because you got Iron Maiden, Skid Row, Wasp, um, The Almighty. I love The Almighty. And there was another one or two, which I can't remember who they were now. Let's have a look. See what the record's like. A little plain white inner sleeve, which is, again, in re this is Up to now, fingers crossed, it's pretty much... As new. Um, it's got some strange marks on it, but I think it's I think they're more like dirt, to be honest. There's some light scratches, but oh, that looks nasty. I think that actually looks worse than what it is. That looks like one of those that looks bad, but it's not like a deep scratch. It probably won't even affect the play right there. Um, but to be honest, this, for me, was the bonus. I did used to have this. Um, it's that 12-inch I wanted more than anything, but I, I have wanted this again. I can't remember whether I've actually got the CDs to go with this for the rest of the set, or I'm going to have to hunt them down again. Um, I used to love CD singles. They're, they're a bit of a pain now, because 
I mean, I know records, you've got to get up and change them over and stuff. But CD singles, you get like three songs and just get into it and it stops. It's a pain right in the... Anyway. So this is the absolutely amazing... This is a cover version as well, but I can't remember who did the original. This is I Don't Need No Doctor. And it's live. And I like this version live of the um, Live in the Raw album. The original version's on Inside the Electric Circus. I like this version much better. The B side's got Widowmaker and Sex Drive. I don't recall hearing Sex Drive live, but I do remember Widowmaker. That's another great song. That's off their uh, debut album, The Widowmaker. No, it's not. I'll tell a lie, it's not. It's off the second album, The Last Command. This needs a bloody good clean. But yeah, very light um, hairline scratches, as they're called, as you take them off the, out the sleeve. That's pretty darn good. I'm pleased with that. Um, but the A-side's filthy there. Look at that. I think he must have wiped his ass on it before he sent it to me. Filthy beast. But I absolutely love that song. This is going to like really be loud. Because it's a 12 inch single and it plays a 45 and you can normally see. I don't think you can see that close up. The groove itself, it's, it, the spaces in between is, is wider. So they are actually pressed louder. I can't get it to focus in. Um, and contrary to believe what uh, some people think, it's not the case if you just turn the volume up during the press and it's the actual groove itself. Um, and this is the poster sleeve that you get with it. So I don't want a big horrible black circle is on that. That's half. Anyway, so that's how the... 12 inch single comes with like the, the the record goes inside that is obviously took it out just to post it um i do have the seven inch of this with a a um a lament a, a lamenton big baldus bellend <laughs> donnington laminate uh, and i've also got a red vinyl which which came in um what they call a blood pack so a plastic sleeve that had like all red blood in it, which has dried up. Um, they all did, They've dried up over the years. And there's the back. That actually looks like Donington as well. But I doubt it is because that was a different year. Uh, hey, do you know what it could be? Who knows? Anyway, let's have a look at this poster. This fella has got one hell of a voice. Not that I want to see his buttocks. But Blackie Lawless, what a voice. Loud, rough, but my God, the notes he can reach. Um... And even though he's knocking on now, he can still he still got it as well. Absolutely fantastic. He's one of my favourite vocalists. Um, I've saw these live in '86, and they are without any shadow of a doubt the loudest band I've ever seen. The louder the Metallica, they were. Um, I didn't get to see Motorhead because I'm sure they would have took up, took over. So this is the poster. Look at the clip of that. And then the other side, it's just like that blue one there. And when you fold it, it's just the back of the sleeve, what you seen earlier. And that one I showed you at the beginning of unfolding this. God damn. And then that goes in there. But that needs a damn good clean, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't normally clean my records. 
Um, because I'm all people say, oh, cloth and not lint cloth free, and I'd, like, I'd rather take them to like somewhere like well, Sound Out used to do them where you took your records and they cleaned them on they cleaned them on the um the Oki Noki machine thing. Alas, it's no longer there now, it's gone since the the pattern of top, unfortunately. So there you go. The 10 inch single of I Am One by Wasp. And the 12 inch single of I Don't Need No Doctor by Wasp. What a song. I've also watched two titles on 4K um, that I said I would give a little review about. Um, so the first one I watched, long overdue getting this. Wow, I'm so glad to have this. Is the Screen Factory edition of Creepshow. Um, I have done an unboxing of this. I'll leave a link for the video below. Um, and when this first came on, um, it actually starts with the the original old Warner Brothers logo. You know, like the one that Warners don't use anymore. And even on the old films, when they release films, that they replace it with the new one. Oh, really nice because I love the logo. This is the one that's got like sort of a a red background with the little roundish rounded off square with the warner logo where it's just like three little lines it's got that on which is impressive this didn't get released by warner brothers over here it was more an independent release it came out on video originally on the um intervision label and the little logo at the beginning was alpha i i've got that in my head now I remember it but yeah it's always been on warner brothers in america so the the warner brothers logo come on which i was ecstatic to see and then the first shot when it opens and it's basically the camera pointing outside the house. It's absolutely stunning. Looks beautiful. Um, all the bits in the house look great. Um, when Tom Atkins goes downstairs after taking Joe King's um, magazine off him and that, then when it it looks at the mirror and you see the creep at the window, then it changes to cartoon. Gets grainy there, but it's not annoyingly grainy. But the colours are beautiful on it. And the bits where you see, like when something happens, like um, when Adrian Barbo's under the stairs and the crate opens and she turns around and the light goes red. Wow. That's stunning. The story, um, the creeping up on you. Not the creeping up on you. The creeping up on you is the it's the cockroach one. That looks pretty good anyway, because that's just in a bright white room. So that one was really hard to judge, because like that just looks excellent anyway. It looks it's just a very very clean picture. And um, the one I meant was something to tide you over, Leslie Nielsen. That looks excellent. That really does look excellent. Um, and again. Towards the end, when you see on the beach the blue and the white lights, and the blue and white. I look like a fucking midget here. Yeah. You look like fuck all on earth. Blue and red. What an absolute big bulbous bell end. <laughs> blue and red lights. They're absolutely stunning. They're so vibrant. Um, again. Kind of reverging on um, Suspiria territory here. Um, Father's Day looked amazing. I love that story. That's probably my favourite one. I think my favourite story is Father's Day, which is the first one. Um, and Something to Tide You Over with Leslie Nielsen, which is the third one. The second story is The Lonesome Death of Geordie Verrill with Stephen King. A lot of people say that's crap. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and again, that's got some great shots in. The colours, again, are, are absolutely amazing. They've really done a good job on this. Um, and as everybody knows, it's, it is one of my favourite films. It's in my top five. Number three, possibly four. It always battles with Halloween. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love this film. Um, it's definitely worth getting on 4K. Uh, so if you get the chance and you love the film, get it. So that's Scream Factory's Creepshow. And the other one I watched was the one that uh, turned up day before yesterday. I could not get this 
into the 4K player fast enough. Um, and this is this, this absolutely stunning US only Arrow release of Witness with Harrison Ford in. Um, I've said this before, I don't particularly like Harrison Ford. Um, I watched an interview with him on this and like, gee, what a miserable git he is. He really is. He's not likeable. Um, he's got one of the most smug faces I've ever seen in my life. Um, and I just don't really like the bloke. However, he's absolutely fantastic in this. I can't fault him for it. Uh, Kelly McGillis is absolutely brilliant in it. Um, and the little boy there, he's absolutely amazing and he's adorable. Um, I could not believe how much I enjoyed this. I knew I loved it, but I've not seen it since like sort of late 80s. I thought this came out in the 90s, and then when I looked, 1985, I didn't realise it was that old. Um, Yeah, absolutely blew me away how old that was. Uh, again, I have unboxed this to show you all that lot, so as well as the Creepshow one, I'll leave a link below to the, the unboxing video of this in case anybody wants to see it who missed it. Um, the picture on this was absolutely stunning. Looks pretty much pristine bit of grain in places but it's nothing too bad it's as it should be um some of the colors look fantastic the story is amazing the film is absolutely amazing i loved it i loved every minute of it um i couldn't remember much about it um i said when i opened this that um the 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 boy with their uh, witnesses a murder which he does and i thought that they actually hid him in an amish community the don't he is actually amish he's 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 from the amish community um and kelly mcgillis is his mum, and they come out of that community they're going somewhere and that's when he sees the murder so he's, if they hadn't have gone on this trip it never would have happened <laughs> so that poor little bugger and you do feel for him um the murder isn't overly graphic but it does show you and I was shocked because for 1985, um, I don't know whether it was cut in the UK or not. Um, something's telling me I must have missed the beginning of this when I saw it because there was bits I couldn't remember at all at the beginning. I don't remember the murder. Um, and some of the people in this, like, I didn't even know they were. I couldn't remember Danny Glover in it. Um, and I certainly didn't realise the unknown Viggo Mortensen. I, I, you've got to look out for him. I didn't realise as well until I watched this, and when I when I unboxed this, I did, it didn't occur to me. Um, but on one of these cards, where are you? Are they in the box? There they are. He's on one of these cards, so I'll show you him so when you watch it, you'll see. You first see him that I remember when they're building the wooden hut, but when they all sit down um, to have their dinner, he's in that shot as well. He's just below my finger. There's Vigo Mortensen. Who knew that? I didn't. Um, he is on the credits because I knew, I was like, that's him. There's no doubt in my mind. I know it's him. And I thought, I need to look at it. Yep, there he was on the credits, but he was pretty low down, I'll be honest. Um, what a film, though. Absolutely amazing. If you, whether you like um, Harrison Ford or not, to be honest, it's totally irrelevant because, like, I've got I have got films where I've I've not liked the actors in it, but they've, they've, they've actually pulled an absolute blinder in it, you know. And this is one of those instances. Um, it's so well acted. Um, the little boy's amazing in it. Um, it. I think it's probably one of the best I've seen Kelly McGillis act. Um, but yeah, I've, I I don't want to spoil it, but that's basically what it is. That the little boy witnesses the murder. So they're getting back home. Um, the perpetrators don't know 
<laughs> about uh, the 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 uh, the Amish sort of side of things to begin with, but they're looking for him. Um, and they're looking for him as well. So it's 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 just an excellent film. If you've not seen this, for me personally, I think you're in for a bit of a treat because I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, so that is the Arrow edition, which you can only get in the States or get it imported over here, of Witness. So there you go. If you're thinking of getting either of those two films, I highly recommend both of them, um, picture quality-wise and the films themselves. For me personally, you won't be disappointed. Um, the the Wasp records, I'm not risking playing them until they've been cleaned, but I haven't played any records for over a year anyway, so there's no great hurry, but I do want to get them cleaned so I know they're done. I don't know if I'll do them myself or whether I'll see if I can get them somewhere where uh, you can get them done on a proper Oki Noki record cleaning machine because they do they do a great job. Um, so that that that's it. That's two little little reviews for you. Highly recommended for picture quality. Um, don't ask me about the sound, the Dolby surround, because I don't know. I don't have the setup, and I don't really pay that much attention to that. Um, I'm just more for the film and the picture quality and how good it looks. Um, and it look, they both look fantastic. Um, there is plenty of other reviews about the audio if you want to get into that. Um, I don't know. You never know. I might get the setup one day and maybe then I will be bothered about it. <laughs> but at the minute, no, I've just got one soundbar. That's it. So there you go. Um, and the, the Wasp records. Yes, I'm over the moon. Finally, I've the right. I don't need no Dr. 12 inch. So thank you very much for watching, all two of you. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have subscribed, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, if it wasn't for you guys subscribing and watching, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, and it really, really does help. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you very soon on the next one. Uh, like I've said before, I've got a couple of ideas coming up, so... I've got an idea that the next one may be either film related or vinyl and if it's vinyl it'll probably be the foreign pressings of the Iron Maiden stuff so if that's your thing keep your eyes peeled and I shall see you very soon. Ta-ta.